I de detach him from autism and every diagnosis put upon him, and I declare on three, every spirit attached to which she renounced, every spirit of autism and mental sickness must leave in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Okay, I leave. In our secular culture today, it is hard enough convincing people that Christianity is more than a fairy tale. But with the help of people like this lady that I'm going to show you, our task is becoming significantly harder. Today, I'm going to show you a video of a self-proclaimed healer and apostle, a lady that tries to heal a young boy of autism. This is heartbreaking, just really disturbing stuff. We're going to talk about manipulation and how it is utilized here and how we should respond to this content and to these people from a biblical perspective. Before we jump into the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting what I'm doing here. Our goal is to get to 400 patrons, and we are getting so, so close. So if you want to support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, and you want to get access to exclusive videos, our Discord, um, video chats that we do, click the link in my description and sign up today. Surrender to you now. Deliver me how you want. Heal me how you want. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay. Come here, you mom. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything in your past generations that were any any religion besides Christianity in their past generations? Sometimes with the Catholic religion, it can be witchcraft being done like praying to saints who are dead can be it is a form of witchcraft and it can be an open door um and even certain rituals so do you want to now just say i renounce any uh, uh witchcraft that is attached to me or that i participated in through catholic i renounce any witchcraft i have participated in through my religion Anything came through my mom's side, mom being abusive. I detach you from all of that that you've renounced, and I break every generational curse in Jesus' name off of you, off of your family, off of him now. And I de detach him from autism and every diagnosis put upon him, and I declare on three, every spirit attached to which she renounced, every spirit of autism and mental sickness must leave in Jesus' name. One, two, three. of a spirit bothering him I didn't know that it's a, I thought it's a sickness so I was so happy I was so overjoyed my son is so different more focused uh, be, before that when we ask him to pray he kind of rebellious and he get mad and you know sometimes he hurt me but now he is so obedient he's more into word of God uh, it's amazing now, there is a lot to say about that video, but the first thing that comes to mind is her continual reference to this idea of generational curses. She asks immediately, one of her first questions is, were you a part of some religion other than Christianity? Was there something else that you did in your past or your family did and believed in their past that might have impact on your son? you know, referencing his autism, like as if his autism could have been impacted by the fact that they believed in a different religion. Now, this might be a very interesting concept, but it's not biblical at all. And actually, Jesus addresses this. In John 9, Jesus and his disciples encounter this blind man, and the disciples ask Jesus this. They say, uh, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Now, we need to recognize that there's a difference between the idea of generational curses and generational consequences. Generational curses and generational consequences. She's referencing quite a bit to this idea of generational 
curses where if they believe the wrong thing as parents or their grandparents believe the wrong thing and they, um, you know, or maybe in witchcraft, then all of a sudden their son could have been born with autism. That's kind of how she sees it. It's a curse on him that she can now free him from by casting out the spirit. That's that's not biblical. That's not biblical. I, and I know people have different perspectives on healing and that kind of thing. There's folks that are continuationists that believe that healing and healers exist today. And then there's cessationists, the people that say, okay, the gift of healing doesn't exist today. And yet they would still acknowledge that healing does happen today. For me, I would end up in the camp that would say, hey, there are no particular healers, but there is healing that happens today. But let's look back for a second to this idea of generational consequences. You think about somebody that maybe drank alcohol during their pregnancy and all of a sudden their child is born with all sorts of deformities and just challenges that they that they have to experience now because of the sins of their parents. And there's a direct correlation there between those things. We can see those things as real, as generational consequences. Uh, but that's there's a, that's, there's a big difference between those two things and somebody that believed in a different religion and all of a sudden we're claiming that the autism that this person is experiencing or whatever other challenge that they're experiencing, whether whether that be dyslexia or ADHD or, you know, anything like that. Oh, that's because they were Catholic or that's because they were Buddhist. It's like that. Where are you getting that from? Like I said, I believe that healing happens. And I believe those who are most passionate about the idea that healing happens today should be most outraged by the absolute distortion and the disgusting nature of of what this event was, at least what I've seen. You think about the manipulation that's happening, all the elements are present. You have a crowd that is uh, boisterous, that is intense, that is emotionally, like the emotionality of it. I don't even know if that's a word, but the emotionality of it is tangible, you can see. And uh, you know that this young boy, right? He has a lot of pressure around him and he's seen people before that have come up that have interacted with this apostle lady in a particular way. They have, you know, spoken as the demon. They have maybe convulsed a little bit. They have said the, the particular words, oh, I'm leaving or I don't want to, or, you know, okay, I leave now. And, and you see him accommodating. He knows what want, what they want to hear from him. And that's why it's so, it's so manipulative and it's so disgusting because you think about um, this young boy and what he's experiencing in this moment and it's just going to be complete and utter confusion. He wants to accommodate to what people want him to do and for the mother, uh, there's an acknowledgement of a deep pain point for her. You imagine the challenge that she has to, you know, experience each and every day navigating this this uh, child with autism. And there are different, like, I'm no expert, but I know there are varying degrees of severity in terms of how that impacts particular people's lives. And so she's hitting on this pain point. She's asking these questions. She's giving um, now, uh, basically a guarantee that things are going to be different, that all I need to do is cast out the spirit. You remember the interview that the woman gave and she said, you know, I thought this was a sickness. I thought this was just something that he was kind of born with, but now realizing that it's a spirit, she's been given all of this hope. Unfortunately, in a lot of ways, it's false hope. Now, I'm not saying that people's autism can't get better and it can't, uh, you know, they can't experience healing in particular ways. And I mean, the, I, I, look, at, like I said, this is beyond my area of expertise, but I do believe that that can, that happens and with different resources and accommodations can learn how to navigate in this world, you know, more easily. And that's wonderful, right? But this idea that all she needs to do is count to one, two, three, and you're going to cast out the spirit of autism. To me, that's manipulative. That's not, that's not God at all. And can we be honest for a second? Why is she counting down from three, three, two, one, as if Jesus needs time to prep and prepare to cast out the demon? Like Jesus is there. He's ready. Don't like, why are you giving it extra time? I don't understand that. Like, seriously, I think that's part of the reason I believe this is so much more performative. Leave in Jesus name. One, two, three. most heartbreaking moments in this whole video is when she supposedly casts out this demon of, of autism and you just hear him say okay I leave and you see in parentheses devil speaking or demon speaking part of me how sad is that that this 
young boy has been basically manipulated in this way that he believes it's like you know he, he believes that this these are the right words i need to say okay i leave and he says what happened what happened and i was like you're fixed you're fixed finally you're fixed because there was so much wrong with you before but now you're you're right in your brain and and you're and you're healed look i i don't pretend to know what it's like to have a child with severe autism i imagine that is really challenging uh in a lot of ways but i also have to believe that for me as i have you know hopefully if god blesses me with children in the future that it would be a desire on my heart to not get rid of the 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 unique giftings and the unique uh, way that God created this child, right? I think about somebody that has Down syndrome. Are people praying, can God heal this child of Down syndrome, right? I know there are so many Christian parents that have children with Down syndrome and children with autism and say, you are looking at this in the wrong way. Like you are looking at this as merely a burden. And in a lot of ways, yes, it's challenging, of course. Of course, I don't pretend to know what that's like. But why wouldn't you i mean as a parent why wouldn't you want to tap into see the giftings of this person and all the all the autistic people in the world that do amazing amazing things and the, their mental capabilities and their artistic capabilities are unmatched like and yet you're like nah we we don't want that let's got let's heal him this is a demon that's going on inside of him what does that do to to him as he grows up as he seeks to accept how God made him in this way, and yet he knows that in a heartbeat, he, you know, his parents wanted to, wanted to change him, basically, right? That they thought it was a demon within him. It's a demon that's doing this. Maybe it's just God. Maybe for some particular reason, God wired him in that way for his glory, that his glory would be revealed. Look, this is a different thing. This is this is kind of a side note, but I think about my own dyslexia. And when I was younger, it was a lot worse. I couldn't read very well till I was 11 or 12. And even some words like that just didn't, they didn't click for me. And spelling now, I'm absolutely awful at spelling. Um, and so I, like to me, if somebody were to come up to me and say, Isaac, I'm pre praying that your dyslexia gets healed or saying to me that there, there's a demon of, of dyslexia in you, a spirit of dyslexia. And it's based on, you know, your parents and, and your grandparents that, you know, you know they, they weren't Christian. So, OK, now you, you have this spirit of dyslexia with you and it needs to be cast out. And if somebody were to come up to me and say that as, as a young as a young person, as a child. I would have liked it. I would have been like, yes, please fix me, fix me, please. I don't want to be like this. But it would have been a hoax. And it also would have, it would have stopped me from really experiencing the blessing of how God wired me and the deeper reliance that I needed to have on God in the midst of this challenge. But also realizing the gift of my brain being wired in a particular way, how I have a greater focus in other areas and greater strengths in other areas. And it's like, man, why aren't we teaching people to, to accept and be grateful about how God wired us, even amidst the, the challenge of, of these things, um, as opposed to just saying, Oh, cast out that demon one, two, three, leave demon. And then this kid is forced to be like, I leave. What happened? And then his mom gives him a big hug because finally he's fixed. That to me is a tragedy. And non-Christians around us can see what's going on. They see that this is just a facade. They see that this is just wrong. And they want no part in this. They want no part in this Christianity of this woman that says, I'm an apostle. I can do these little healing crusades. And I, I know I'm being a little bit more aggressive maybe than I usually am. And it's really just because I believe that the, this is so harmful to the name of Christ. Like I said, I believe that healing happens. I do. I believe that my mom was, was healed from breast cancer years ago. Uh, and that was a, a miracle in a lot of ways. Um, but I don't believe this. 
I don't believe this. Thank you for watching this video. If you got something from this and enjoy the content and, and get something from the content on my channel, uh, please subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. Until next time, God bless.